It's a great puzzle to write unit tests for scientific software. Let's talk about one of the challenges and a tool to help with that challenge, the unit test designed at JL package. So the setup is that we're writing a unit test for a function, which we call the function under test. We send parameters in and it returns results. Then we check those results. That's a unit test. So what does it look like when we peer inside of a complicated function under test? Here's an example of a function for some highly successful code. If we wanted to write multiple unit tests that explore all the branches of this code, every if statement, then how do we do it? We need to vary the inputs so that the code makes different choices at each branch, at each test. This code has a lot of branches, which we call high cyclomatic complexity. But you can have the same difficulty with code coverage from code that has lots of equations, which is called high Halstead complexity. It feels to me like I have this blob of code in the middle and I'm probing it with these test arguments, each of which produces part of an image of the code, which is the result. A good spread of test arguments equals good coverage of underlying code. I'd like a complete picture of how the code behaves, but I can probably only get a partial picture. What would a complete picture look like? Consider the sample function at the top of this page. It has five arguments, which have three or four possible values. If I were to call this every possible way there were to call it, I'd have to call it 768 times. We could enumerate them with a five deep for loop or we could use the unit test design package to enumerate all possible sets of arguments as shown below. It's a great approach to being complete, but when does this have problems? There are two situations where it has problems. This example at the top has 25 arguments. Is that ridiculous? No. This effectively happens at the top of an application when you consider all options a program can have including command line options and whatever options you set in files. The number of possible tests is crazy large. Or you may be testing some slow inference problem where each test takes hours or days to run. So each test is very expensive. Or both at the same time, that's the situation I ran into that led me to write this library. So if we can't run every possible test, then what do we do about it? Well, there are a few approaches. We could write a few manual tests, which is perfectly reasonable, especially if you have unit tests at levels below this where the functions are easier to test. Or we could choose random arguments for a few tests. There's a great paper shown here that's basically a love letter to randomized testing. You should read it. I'd like to show you a third method, which uses optimization to carefully choose tests that are most likely to cover all branches. For our five arguments and 768 possible tests, here are 16 tests that would be, in some sense, optimal choices. They're optimal in the sense that if you pick any pair of columns on this page, which is any pair of arguments to the function. And then you pick any pair of values those arguments can take. Then those arguments are guaranteed to be called together in at least one of these test cases. This is called all pairs testing, and it's a kind of combinatorial testing. It's one of the, unit, one of the test designs in the unit test design library. So how do we use this in practice? This is what a unit test using all pairs would look like. First, you define values for the arguments. Then the package generates tests. And finally, the code loops over those tests. Behind the scenes, the library uses greedy optimization to create the test. So it can be slow for large numbers of arguments. But this is precisely when it's most useful. Documentation for the library describes how to cache sets of test cases using the artifacts package, which works really well for this, so that you don't have to generate them every time.
So what's missing here? If you look in the lower right hand corner, you see known answer. There has to be some way to identify whether the result passes a test, what that known answer is. And what I find for these tests is that we often test traits of the result more than knowing what the exact result is. So determining that, that's still on you. There are practical challenges to writing tests that have optimal coverage like this. And the library helps with those, especially giving you the ability to, speci to specify combinations of arguments that don't make sense and avoid those. For instance, if one argument is a true or false and were it false, another argument just shouldn't be chosen. That's possible. There's a small DSL in order to specify those. But you can also increase the weightness of coverage for more sensitive testing. The code that carries more risk might need more sensitive testing, which means more, more than pairwise, but also all triples or all four-way coverage. So that's it. The unit test design package is one arrow in the quiver of testing techniques for Julia. It's a black box testing technique, meaning it doesn't use any knowledge about what happens inside the test function. It ignores our intuition about what might be wrong with the code, which is a great complement to the more narrative tests that we do, looking at common usage and corner cases. Thanks. It was great to be able to share this with you today.